Okay, hi there all. So we're now going to do another estimated position example. This time we're doing question 8 from the Yacht Master selection of fund B had. So question 8 is using the log extract below plus plot the estimated position at 1555 SPDST. Okay, so it's the 12th of October. We're starting at 1555 uh, 1455 SPDST and finishing at 1555. So it's a whole hour's plot. So that's fun. That we don't need to be worrying about halving tide, tidal streams or anything like that. So that's handy. Uh, the log, we've got a 0.2 of a mile logged already. So we're traveling uh, 5.4 miles during this passage um, through the water. Course is 90 degrees. The wind is a southerly. Force four, and we have leeway of 10 degrees. So if we're heading on 90 degrees, 90 degrees being that way, the wind is here, and we have 10 degrees of leeway. So the leeway is going to be pushing us to the north. So we're on a starboard tack here. If the wind is hitting our starboard side, so we will be subtracting, because we're going anti-clockwise around the compass. Um, our leeway. So subtract leeway, note to self. The starting depth is five meters, so pretty shallow, and where we finish up it should, should be 38 meters. Okay, so to get started I'm going to start plotting my position. So I've got 45, 45, 40, uh, 45 degrees, 53.35, so I've got 45, 50, 1, 2, 3, 0.35 so I've marked that off there and I've just drawn a line across the chart and then I go to my lat longitude so I've got 0546.7 so I've got 0540 0550 so 46 well there's 50 49 48 47 46 is here and 0 0.7 2 4 6 7 there so that's given me my fix just in here and that kind of makes sense because that's on my five meter contour line in sand bay so happy with that the next step is working out what am i going to plot on the on the chart so i've got my uh, compass course of 090 degrees okay and so i've got I'm just going to write my mnemonic so cadbury's dairy milk is very lovely and tasty okay because uh, I've got leeway in it this way so it's not just very tasty but it's very lovely and tasty so I'm going to check next I can see I've got deviation to look at so on a course of 90 degrees deviation is four degrees east that's easy enough so four degrees east and if I just put my cadet down for good measure we're going to, going from compass to true, we add the east. So that's going to give me magnetic of 094 degrees magnetic. Variation we know is always 6 degrees west in this area, so that is going to be a subtraction. The leeway is 10 degrees, and we're on starboard tack, and we made a note earlier that we are going to be subtracting, because we're on starboard. So we're subtracting 16 degrees here, so that's going to take us to 88, 78, true, 0, 7, 8 degrees, true. That is my course to plot on the chart. Okay, so, first thing, get my old plotter out, 78 degrees, 79, 78 is and before I plot that line on, how far am I drawing it? I am drawing it 5.4 miles because it's uh, 5.6 miles minus the 0.2 at the start, which is just kind of seems pointless, but they're just trying to catch you out, aren't they? So, there we go. So, well, five miles is that much. So I'm going to draw about to the 8 inches mark, uh, somewhere around there, so I don't want to waste too much. But, and now I'm just going to measure my 5.4. Oh, I was a little bit stingy. Just need to lengthen that line a touch. Ah. 
Okay, and just gonna plot my, it's my water track. My boat's heading is always the water track and it is, what was it, 078 degrees, 078 degrees true. And it was 5.4 nautical miles. <laughs> mm. Okay, so I've got my dead reckoning on there. Right. Next step is going to be finding out what is my estimated position. So I've got the dead reckoning. I need to go to find my tides. It gives me tidal dam and K to use on the question. So um, I'm going to have a look at that in a second. But before I find it out, I need to find out what's my tidal hour. Okay, so we're in October and it's October the 12th. Again, another day of October the 12th. I've got a bit of a mess going on here from my previous example. Let's go tie that up a bit. But yeah, but still October the 12th. High water is 14.25 and we're travelling at 14.55 SPDST. So we're travelling about two hours after this, but that's still going to be our closest. So, so I've got... Victoria, 12th of October, high water is 14.25 UT, okay, and high water it is also 5.0 metres. The low water, both sides of it, in fact, low water is going to be 1.6, doesn't matter exactly it doesn't make a difference which of the low waters it is because they're the same. If there was a drastic difference between our low water heights, we'd need to make sure that we used the correct one. Um, and the correct one would be the one uh, which our travel time falls in between. Uh, so the low water and high water. Okay, so I've got a range of 3.4. Another classic intermediate kind of range there. So I'm not 4.9 for springs and I'm not 2.4 for neeps. So I'm going to have to interpolate that further down the line. Now, more importantly, I just need to work out my tidal hour so I can put this away. So I can just, I've got my 14.25. Um, so if I turn this into SPDST, so UT, it, same as the equivalent of you know British winter time. Um, and then we need to change it into the equivalent of French summertime. So this is two hours ahead, yeah, because we change, we add one hour for being in France and then we add another hour for being uh, in daylight savings time. So it's going to give us 16.25. SPDST is our time. So, so high water is 16.25 and we're looking for when we started our passage uh, was at 14.55 yeah so 14.55 is what we're looking for so if I subtract half an hour add half an hour it gives me uh, 16.55 and this is going to give me 15.55 and then if I take another hour off it's going to give me 14.55 so there we go, I can see that I'm going to be perfectly on high water, minus one hour here, and I'm travelling in exactly that hour, which is very nice of the question. You can notice I had a little bit of a uh, <laughs> moment there with my previous example. So, there we go, so I'm travelling in between this time. So now we need to find out at tidal diamond K, what is the tidal stream information? So I go to my tidal diamond top of the page tidal diamond k is here so k minus one it's 110 3.2 at springs 1.7 at neeps okay so i'm going to write that down here so it's 1 on 0 degrees true is the bearing of the tide and then springs <clears throat> is 3.2 and leaps is 1.7 I need to work out what is my intermediate tide though because springs neap 3.2 is when the range of tide is 4.9 
and the neeps is when the range is 2.4 and I'm somewhere in between that so I'm going to be somewhere in between here okay and just as a quick reminder if I wanted to work out how, how do I know that it's springs and neeps at those ranges again I go back to my Victoria tide tables and look at the graph and the graph tells me 4.9 and 2.4 there so I do need this book again now, so I'm going to go to the old competition of rates, everyone's favourite competition of rates diagram. Make sure I've rubbed off my old workings out. So my range, my springs was 3.2, so 3.2 is there. My neeps is 1.7, which is there. Again, don't make sure you don't go to the wrong mark that you've previously made from another example. It's been done many times before. Okay, so there's my line on there, and my range today was 3.4 meters, so 3.4 takes me to there, which is going to give me about 2.2, 2.3, somewhere in the region. Okay, so let's call it 2.3, we're closer to halfway, I'd say. So I'm going to get 2.3 as my intermediate tide. Okay, so that's that done. And so now I can plot my, inter uh, my tidal streams onto my dead reckoning. So I had a bearing of 110 degrees. and I'm drawing it for 2.3 miles. So remember, if you're not sure, you're always drawing your line in the direction of the big blue arrow. Once your two arrows are facing north, there we go, so I'm drawing towards the edge of the page. Okay, and that is gonna give me my three arrows and I need to measure my uh, was it 2.3 knots of tide? It took me fairly close to the edge of the page. And fairly close to the old Richard rocks. And it takes me just bang on there as my estimated position. Okay, so there I've got my EP fix. Or EP, EP fix is the wrong term, but my EP. And I'm just going to mark off my coordinates. So I have got coordinates of forty five degrees fifty one fifty two fifty three minutes decimal two four six zero north and my longitude down here, and that is uh, 5 degrees 40, 39, 38, 37, 36 point 1. And that was 5 degrees, 5 degrees 36.1. West. Okay, so that's part A complete, and part B is asking me what was the vessel's cog and sog. So if this is nice and simple, because in this situation it was all over an hour, so I now just need to draw on my cog. So if this is where I started, that's where I finished. I the direct course to that point is where I'm interested in. One other point, I just if I wanted to double check that my EP was correct, we get given our depth at the beginning. And the depth was 38 metres, and we can see I'm just south of that little 38 metre shelf there. So I'm assuming that's where we're supposed to end up. Okay. But now I've plotted on my cog. My cog came in at a bearing of 2.4.
87 degrees, I think. 087 degrees, true. And my SOG, my speed, is going to be that distance there. So that was 567.5 knots. Oops. So 7.5 nautical miles. So cog was 087 degrees, true, and my SOG was 7.5 knots. And I can write 7.5 knots or more nautical miles because it's both the same thing. I've travelled for one hour at 7.5 knots, which means I have travelled 7.5 miles. So yeah, so hopefully that was simple to follow. And if you've got any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below the video. And yeah, hope that was useful. Many thanks. Bye.